Hi guys, I'm Mike Barron and I'm course director and co-founder at Cape Rad Research and Dive Development. Dylan and I have been invited to give a couple of guest lectures or presentations for you guys, so thank you for having us. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about the who's, the what's and the why's of Cape Rad, basically. So let's get into it. So firstly, who are we? So we're a marine fuel station based here in Cape Town, South Africa, um, on the False Bay coastline. And we serve as a platform for early career scientists, either at university or just graduated, um, for them to get some more development in their field work, uh, analytical sense as well, and their overall sort of um, ability and competence as scientists. We specialize in monitoring and measuring biodiversity, and we teach the sort of processes behind that. Um, we're in a very, very cool, unique spot here in Falls Bay, which we're gonna talk a little bit about now, um, which really helps with this side of things. And we train very well publicated um, sampling techniques, both using scuba techniques, free diving techniques, um, and then we encompass the, the scientific elements into it, the scientific diving side. So here's a few snaps of us um, out in the field. Here you can see a mixture of scuba and free dive um, inside the kelp forests. Uh, it's a really beautiful area to, to dive and work. Here we are. Um, deploying some transects and some quadrats, training some students. So who are we? Um, I'm Mike Barron, just introduce myself. There's Dylan, um, he's also gonna be giving a talk to you guys, um, whether he has done or not already, I'm not sure the, the, um, the order. And then Jessie's our student liaison photographer, so she works on our social media side and we're a small team of uh, passionate conservationists and scientists and uh, yeah, we, we've developed this field course, module-based field course to help provide a, a toolbox basically for early career scientists. So our background, uh, my background is white shark deterrent. So I spent three or four years towing decoys around and I was investigating um, the visual deterrent of this ventral pattern of the killer whale and how it might affect the behavior hunting behavior of white sharks and and whether it was a deterrent or um, or not uh, the results weren't um, particularly significant there was a slight biological trend towards some form of deterrence um, but yeah it was uh, it was an interesting and fun few years um, where I felt sort of developed my foundation of, of, of research and science and then Dylan um, also in the same area, um, was working on white shark work, and now he's working on his PhD, which is looking at the white shark population estimate, which I think he's gonna to talk to you in more detail about. But basically, he's using photo um, IDs of dorsal fins on the trailing edge there. These notches are like fingerprints, and by collaborating all these photos over the many years, we can, we can sort of start counting how many sharks there are using some snazzy statistics, which he'll get into more detail. So the Cape Rad mission is to train early career scientists, marine biologists um, in field skills based using scuba and freedance techniques. Um, and we also train those basic recreational skills as well. Um, and we, we basically, our background was sort of ecotourism side of things, but we wanted to give um, young students a toolbox uh, of skills rather than just going and volunteering for uh, whatever, doing a bit of helping out on boats and things. This is a real module based thing where we give you the, the design, the field side, the data collection, the analysis, and we give you the full story um, in this really interesting geographical region. Um, and it's basically builds your confidence of skills and, and knowledge you've already learned through your university courses. Um, and then also we'll build on that into a more deeper level and obviously being hands-on and, and involved in something is much more engaging and, and uh, you develop much faster, and more confidently. So some of the research projects that we are currently uh, operating at Cape Rad and we get our students involved in as a training process, um, a success of marine protected areas in South Africa. So around this peninsula where we, we work, there's a a big marine protected area and within this there's no-take zones where it's a replenishment scheme for the biodiversity. So we talk a little bit about this and then we, um, we measure the biodiversity inside and out. Kelp distribution and density. So obviously we're in a really great area for kelp forests and the distribution here is a very, very interesting one. 
So we're monitoring the processes of um, increase and decrease and densities of the kelp forests themselves as a habitat. We're also working with the city of Cape Town on um, an influence of sewage outfall on species richness, which sounds pretty gross, um, and it is. Basically, Cape Town has certain areas where they basically just pump all their effluents out into the sea about a kilometre offshore. And we're looking at the, how that affects the biodiversity in those areas and the surrounding areas. We also do a bit of microplastic work and we do some microplastic trawls. Uh, we do some um, river sampling, water sampling for microplastics. Um, so it's quite an all encompassing um, varied projects. And then the main bulk of our, of our work is using, looking at shark, fish, algae and invertebrate um, biodiversity and monitoring programs. Um, using various techniques to sort of teach how these sampling methods can be implemented under the challenges obviously of the environmental challenges and physical challenges of being on scuba as well. So you might have done a few of these kinds of sampling techniques before um, through university but when you're on scuba and in, in, in the ocean it's a different story altogether. So why? Why, um, why have we come, why is Cape Rad based in Cape Town, South Africa? Well, many of you may know already that this is an absolutely incredible spot, hot spot for biodiversity. Um, most people know about the African shark and uh, the endemic penguin species and the African sharks that we get in this area, the white sharks, blue sharks, maker sharks, loads of different species of sharks. And um, we've got our Cape fur seals in massive numbers, just in False Bay here alone. We have probably over 70,000 individuals um, living on the Seal Island. We have a number of dolphin species, whale species, other cetacean species that cruise through and frequent the area on a regular basis. And this megafauna obviously is the big draw for a lot of people and, and um, it's very exciting. Um, and we delve into the reasons behind this biomass of megafauna. So, the reason why this area and why we set up here is so unique and so special for biodiversity oops, is, is essentially these two currents which um, move around the coastline of southern Africa. So on the east coast we've got our Agullus current coming down from Mozambique. It's like a warm tropical uh, current, very warm water pushing very very fast and it pushes right down the coast there to the tectonic plate and then it gyres back on itself into the Indian Ocean. Um, and then we'll have these micro gyres that move further and further west depending on the strength of the current. And these little pockets of warm water, or sometimes very large pockets, push right over west and you'll see where it says Cape Point there. That's where we're based and that water gets trapped inside that bay. Um, so it allows a lot of species diversification because a lot of species can increase their range into much more southerly regions due to the warmer water pockets where uh, they can sort of move more freely. Then on the west coast there, upon the Atlantic side, we've got the Benguala current. This is a cold water current, anti-clockwise, um, bringing in very, very high levels of nutrients um, from, from the deep oceans using uh, upwellings and currents. Um, so this is pushing up the west coast there. And, and these two currents, they sort of mix and uh, collide around that Cape Agullas area and further west sometimes, again depending on the power of the, uh, the currents, and it creates this incredible eco-region. And you can see the temperature map here where we're looking at uh, the different temperatures throughout the years. Um, those January to March or December to March months where it's our summer here, beautiful warm waters cruising down in the water yesterday is like 21 degrees, it was fantastic. And then that current drops off and slows and weakens throughout the winter um, and that again creates these different shifts in the species that we see depending on the time of year. And we also get these very very high contrasting temperature differences particularly in the summertime. So as you can see on this heat map there that's False Bay. We operate mostly in the False Bay region there um, and like I say it can be 20-21 degrees in False Bay compared to over on the other side where it can be a cool 9, 10 degrees. And these temperature differences also create this biodiversity, this incredible contrast and, and um, flexibility in, in nutrients and, and current processes. 
So that upwelling on that west coast, which brings all that nutrients, the Benguala current, is driven by our southeaster winds. So our trade winds here blow from sort of November through to February. Very, very strong southeasters, and they push a lot of surface water up the coastline. And because it can't be replenished from, from anywhere else because of the landmass, the continent of southern Africa in the way, then we find these upwellings occur. And you've probably talked about upwellings at some point in your, in your studies before. Now, this happens quite regularly all over the place. California, Australia um, have similar geographical um, characteristics which cause this. Um, and they're talking sort of 10 to 15 meters maybe in, in a 24 hour period. Here, because of the intensity of the winds and the sort of shapings of the coastline, we, we can get 30 or 40 meters of upwelling in a 24 hour period. So it's a huge amount of water shifting all the time up to the surface and, and bringing that marine snow, that organic matter and those dormant life forms up to the surface, allowing for huge amounts of nutrients. And that food chain basically looks a lot like this. The phytoplankton is pulled to the surface and it lies dormant when it's too dark and not enough light to feed. Once it comes up into those crystal clear blue waters and gets lots of sunlight saturation, it blooms and goes crazy. The zooplankton follows up to feed. The predatory zooplankton comes up to feed on the zooplankton. And this allows, uh, this consistency of nutrients allows filter feeders um, to create these habitats and settle on these rocks and things um, and filter feed through the water. And that sets up this beautiful marine habitat and protected area for smaller fish species and other vertebrates. Um, and then obviously the larger fish come in and feed on those guys, the predatory fish come in on those. And then that supplies this huge biomass of life to support the megafauna, the, the penguins, the seals, the dolphins, the sharks, etc., to, to create this amazing uh, biodiversity in this area. And that basically creates um, the life here. This is a chlorophyll concentration level, so you can see what I mentioned before, that warm water on the east coast, coming down the east coast from the Mozambique, is relatively low in chlorophyll concentration, which essentially means low um, phytoplankton. And then on the west coast, huge amounts of upwelling from those powerful winds and those surges from the deep with high levels of nutrients allow the, uh, the chlorophylls to bloom um, on that west coast that creates that huge amount of food source. Um, and here's a few more pictures of us busy at work and just to demonstrate some of the beautiful uh, creatures that we get um, along this along this bay area. Um, and yeah, that's uh, a short little intro to who Kate Rad are and what we do, who we are and why we're here. So um, yeah, we're gonna do some more presentations for you guys soon. Um, with on more specific projects or um, species. So uh, thanks for listening and um, speak to you soon.